Hello and welcome back to another Demis Helen tutorial. Bass is our topic today and more specifically the sub bass with the relationship between the kick and the sub. Now in trance and many other genres of music the kick and the bass have a very close relationship because of the frequency range they're in. So we want things to be as tight and as solid as possible when it comes to the low end. And that's why in this video we're going to take a look at a static phase point and a random phase point. We're going to look at the differences and why we want to set it to static. And then we're going to also look just towards the end briefly into setting a phase point and give you some examples hopefully so you can hear the difference between the two. And it's all about the hearing and not the visuals on screen. It's about taking in the information through your ears and not being influenced by what you can see on the screen. And that way you're going to train your ears to actually hear these differences a lot easier easier and a lot quicker when you're doing your mixes. And with that said, let's get started. If you have any comments or anything to add to this video, let me know down in the comments. And here we are in the project. So you can see three tracks here. We've got the kick drum just for pacing and just to give you an idea of how it sounds. Then we have a sub that has 100% random phase enabled. So they're all made in vital. We'll have a quick look in a second. And then the other sub bass has got 0% chance of random phase. So we've locked in a phase point and it's it's locked in, that's it, it stays in that position, it'll always hit in that particular place. Whereas this one can choose 100% of that wave shape, it could choose anywhere and it can choose anywhere, anytime, there's no locked in position. And the best way to show you this in a visualizer is I'm going to load up two EQs, Pro Q3s. You can do this with Span, it's free. You can do it with Nova EQ if you want. The reason for using Pro Q3 in this tutorial is because it's kinder to the computer whilst I'm actually recording. Span's a little bit iffy when you load two of them up side by side. So let's take a look at the two vital presets. So we have these two here. I'm just going to bring this on screen. It's going to look a bit weird. There we are. So the first one with the 0% chance random phase, I've turned the random phase down to zero using a saw wave at minus 12. They're both absolutely identical apart from this phase section. And it's going through a low pass here as well. Then over here, we have exactly the same, but we have a 100% chance of random phase. Exactly the same filtering, exactly the same setup in the oscillators. No effects in each. And there's the advanced tab for anybody that wants to just take a quick look. With that said, let's listen to the kick drum and solo the first sub bass with this, which is the 0% random phase. And let's take a listen. And just as a disclaimer, there is no major processing going on here at all. We've just rolled off the lows on the EQ and you'll see that in a second, just to get rid of things below that sort of 20 hertz mark, just a really quick cleanup. Okay, I just want to let you listen to that over twice just so you, you can get used to processing that. And then I'm going to play this one now, which has the 100% randomization attached. Okay, so if you heard a difference, let me know down in the comments. It'd be interesting to see if you've picked this out. Would be interesting to see if you can hear the difference, especially if you are coming into this learning these things. So what I'll do now is just load up the two EQs. So the first one is going to be the zero randomization and the other one is the 100%. Now you can see the labels at the top, sub 100% random, and this one is the sub 0% random. And what I'm gonna do now is load the two EQs up. You can see both of them, I've got a 36 dB roll off and everything is set as standard, both at 20 Hertz on the dot. So it's just to kill that lower frequencies, just basic treatment. But let's just take a look at how different they look. See if you can spot the difference. Okay, so I've let you have a look at those. I'm just going to click off on both of these to get rid of these bottom bits. And what you're seeing here is the steady frequency on this side and the unsteady one on this side. And they're hitting the same note as we've just heard in the demo. They're playing side by side on silent at the moment. 
And what we're going to do is going to use the freeze function in Pro Q3. So this is another reason why I used it over span, not just for performance problems. Now the analyzer down here has a freeze function. This is a spectrum grabber mode. Once that's activated, which you can see it is, all we have to do is click on the EQ and then just hover over the frequencies and they will solidify and show you what are the most prominent frequencies. So you can easily grab frequencies and attenuate them if you need to, which is a really handy feature. But at the same time, it's going to show us any phase problems. So let's have a look at the first one. OK, so here we go. So I'm just going to hover over here. Let it solidify and you can see the frequencies here and all the harmonics all the way down the spectrum to about here, which is around the 2000 hertz mark, the two kilohertz area. And they're consistent. The peaks, the troughs, everything is consistent across the board. Yeah, you've got a little bit of a dip. You can see the waveform dropping a little bit there, but the shape is consistent the whole way through. So bringing that over to this one, if we solidify on here, you can see these peaks and troughs are actually shifting around a little bit and you can see the troughs are getting louder in certain sections and pushing up and changing shape. Even to this point, you can see these ones changing. Let's do that again so you can see. Especially this area, look at there. In a nutshell, what you are seeing on this side is the synth choosing a different position in that waveform every time the key is hit. Whereas on this side, we're only seeing the phase position that is in a static position, the position we have chosen. We can change that position if we want to, but we can lock it in and it won't move. Whereas this one's always going to choose some at random. Even if we put it onto 1%, it's going to move a little bit within that spectrum. It's got a 1% chance of moving around, which is still not ideal for your sub base. You want it to be static. So let's get rid of these. And I'm going to load up the synth here for the 100% randomization one. So essentially what is happening if I use my mouse cursor as a positioning tool, we are going to have the first hit here, for example, and then the next base hit is going to be over here. And then the next one could be over here. The next one could be here. The next one could just move a little bit. It's truly randomizing, but it's never going to hit in the same place. It's always going to pick somewhere in that waveform. It's going to pick this point, this point, this point. But it's going to be random. And that's what you don't want to happen. Imagine if your kick drum moved around in random places. So one minute it's in the left speaker a little bit more than the right. And then suddenly it's centered and then it goes to the left speaker entirely. It'd be weird and disorientated and it would lose power and drive, especially in electronic dance music. And then looking at the other patch with 0% chance of random phase, it's set to 180 degrees, meaning it's straight in the middle, it's hitting straight in the middle every time and it will never deviate from that point. We can change that point, so we can drag this down and we can say all the way to zero, it's going to start right at the beginning. And again, 360 is right at the end. And it's just going to pick that point and never change. But the question is, why would you want to change the position? And that is based on how it sits in the mix. So you get in crossover frequencies, you get in masking occurring. It's a whole different topic, but you're going to hear the bass have a sweet spot when you start shifting through. So usually I'd shift from 180 down to zero and pick something that is off axis to this. So off axis would be 90 degrees. That's a, a good starting point, but you're going to hear different points hit harder. So let's have a listen. So what you're listening to there, you could see I moved it around a lot. If you move it really quickly on the face, you're going to get the impression of a fine tune being manoeuvred. You could hear when I brought it down to 90, there's probably not much change to your ears. I brought it down to zero, you probably didn't hear much change there. So I'm going to give you a little bit to focus on and just focus on the attack of the sub. So the attack point right at the very beginning is going to sound softer when I turn it down to 90, but it's going to sound a bit clickier, a bit harder on that 180. It's very subtle, but just give it a shot. We've chosen 90 as our starting point. 
It's going to be a bit softer. And then when we return it by double clicking to 180, you'll hear the attack of the sub be a little bit more prominent. And these are the sort of decisions that you're going to make. There's other reasons to move the phase position round in the context of a track. But again, that is beyond what this tutorial is just trying to show you. I'll hit play. I'm going to let this four bar loop play twice so you can know exactly when I'm going to switch it and see if you can hear the difference. If I've demonstrated that well enough, you should be able to hear that change. You might initially hear a change with your ears just because you visually see me change the phase, but switching back to 90 was more obvious for me to show you. And it's almost like I've gone to the attack and increased it a little bit. So it just sounds like it's sweeping in a little bit more into it. Whereas when we put it to 180, it sounds like the attack is sharper. So hopefully that is going to help you understand how the face position works and how detrimental that is on your sub bass and anything in that sort of low portion. But usually in sort of electronic music, it's your kick and your sub that you don't want to be moving around. You want them in to be solid mono. So these are the steps that you can take and then you can obviously put them into mono using a utility or anything in the synth that makes it into mono. That's absolutely fine doing it that way. There's many different ways that you can do that. And just before we finish up, I'm just going to bring this level down of this synth. I want to show you one more thing that will demonstrate the phase position. So we're going to make a nine voice super saw. I'm going to bring that down to like 16%. It's going to sound like this. Okay, so that's how it sounds. You'd expect nine voices per key, and that's equating to all of the notes that I was playing there at that time, which is five. And we have phase at 100% randomization. So that's going to make sure those voices are spread out as far as possible to avoid that masking effect that you get where it sounds like it's swirling and swishing around in the mix. If we bring that down to zero, we're actually going to force all of those notes. So nine times five again, but just in the center, because we've got 180. So they're all going to hit in the middle here. And as you can imagine, there's going to be phase issues. You're going to get masking of frequencies. So if I hit all those keys again, you get this little attack of sound at the beginning. You get the sensation of a super saw, but it's really narrow and it sounds pretty awful when you hit those keys. If we slowly increase this, you can hear the sound gets wider. And then when we re-trigger, we get a true randomized position on the voices. And that brings us to the end of the tutorial. So hopefully that was an easy way for you to visualize and understand why phase is important in the low end of your mix. That's just one portion of the conversation in terms of kick and bass relationship, but it is nonetheless a very important thing to understand. And with that said, thank you very much for watching. I will see you all in the next video. Take care.